Well, hey, everybody. I've got Scott Colburn with me today, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, some COVID um, situations and, and how he's navigating that with his team. Um, so welcome, Scott. Can you tell me what your title is with the Cliff Drysdale Group? Thanks, Mike. Great to be here. Um, like you said, Scott Colborn, I'm the Chief Operating Officer. Uh, my role is to oversee almost all operations of the company. Uh, we are a nationwide company and we do have five locations that we oversee the program at in Texas. So we have locations in New Braunfels, in Tyler, uh, two in the Houston area and one just north of Austin. So great to be here and, and chat about tennis and kind of how everyone's been reacting and uh, being proactive with COVID. Yeah. Well, let's uh, kick it off then. My first question for you, sir, is uh, um, what's one big change or adjustment that you guys, you and your team have made as an organization kind of operating tennis out of your facilities due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic? Sure. Um, I think everybody's gone through different phase and different timelines, you know, initially when things first started to happen and, you know, as we became more and more concerned and, and more uh, government regulation happening in Texas, you know, not all the clubs closed down, but some of the clubs did close down. So early on, it was a matter of just really communicating with our staff a lot and then also communicating with the members and the players a lot. We found that you cannot over communicate in this situation. And so really communicating to them and a lot of ways it was uh, a little bit of boots on the ground, you know, phone calls, a little bit of emails, uh, a little bit of Facebook messaging, social media messaging. Um, and then as started, as clubs started to open up more and, and kind of, if we didn't close completely, you know, reopen in different phases at each club in Texas, we really tried to dial in our online reservation system to make mm -hmm. things a little, you know, less contact at the club so players could, you know, check in outside and go straight to the courts or they could, you know, come straight to the front desk, make an advanced registration in the app. So really tried to provide a more seamless experience for people to check in and keep playing. I think I think we're all lucky that tennis, you know, we all believe it's a great sport to play regardless of the time, but we've seen really great playing numbers through this entire pandemic. Um, and I think it's indicative of people feeling safe playing tennis and being out there. And it's just been a great sport. Yeah, awesome. Um, anything new that you guys have incorporated in terms of programming, what the what the consumer gets on court? Sure. Um, I think that one of the changes that we did specifically for the summer was really scale back our summer camp operations. Um, so I, I can't say that's necessarily good or bad for the consumer, but right now it's necessary of what we had to do, you know. In the past, we'd have full day offerings with lunch and swim time. And, you know, so we really scaled back that into be a junior session where the kids could come, be safe, staff be safe for that time period. So that was definitely a change and scaled back. I would say one of the things that we're looking forward with, and I would recommend every provider and every location look into, is adjusting the times of your after school programming. So traditionally, you might start at 3.30 or 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. So now you may have an opportunity to start that at two o'clock or one o'clock. The red ball is in your area. The orange ball is maybe doing remote learning and remote learning for a five and six year old is vastly different for remote learning for a 10 year old. Mm -hmm. And so parents of that age group are most likely to be looking for things to do early afternoon because, you know, it's not easy to, to parent and to teach and to work with a five or six year old at home. So we're going to offer more program in the mid afternoon for those parents that are choosing to do remote learning or maybe the school district is requiring remote learning and adding program in the afternoon for the fall. So um, the way that, you know, it, I'll leave the next question for you, Mike, but it kind of comes right into the next question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> do you, the next question for the communication with the consumers? <laughs> yeah, so it's just, I was just talking to one of our clubs and we're, we're, we want to communicate with the parents and so, we set up a text message service where we can send a text message out to everybody as a group message and they can text us back one-on-one. -on -one. So, okay. um, you know, we've all heard of group messages, but they can go wrong in a hurry if, some, if there's an issue. So it's a group message going out and then it's a one-on-one -on -one coming back in from the parent. And so what we've done is we're reaching out to parents to say, 
you know, what are you doing for school in the fall? Do you know, would these kind of options help? So um, we're trying to move quickly and, and be agile and not say, this is our program. You have to do this. You have to fit in our box. Um, you know, I'm a parent. We recognize the spring was really difficult to not have school. And then on top of that, not have after school activities. So if for whatever reason we don't have school in the fall, whether it's a personal choice or a government choice, we at least want to give parents activities to do. And so um, we've been trying to communicate via text message with parents. Um, we've been doing that in relation to summer camp. Uh, email, we still love email, um, primarily for the reason is that you own the list. Mm -hmm. Now, some people don't open the email, so maybe your list is not as good as what you thought or it's not as engaging enough, mm -hmm. um, but at least you own the list. Um, and then we've also experimented a lot this summer with paid advertising on Facebook. So oh. we've spent money on advertising for private lessons in a certain geographical radius. And it's pretty straightforward to dial into Facebook advertising. Even for someone who's an individual, you can target people who like tennis in the Austin area and then run a Facebook ad. In most cases, you only need to pick up one private lesson, you know, to get a return on your investment. And, um, you know, I've heard stories of gym equipment, you know, going for three, four times the value. So people are looking to exercise. And so the Facebook advertising has been a really good way to reach some new customers that we hadn't seen before. Wow. So um, excellent stuff. And I love how you guys are kind of meeting everybody where they are, you know, not expecting them to fit into your mold, but you kind of navigating and kind of pivoting as the, the, the hot word of the, of the year is um, to meet your consumer where they are. So that's kind of neat. Um, we might be out of time, but I'm going to ask you one more question, Mr. Scott. So um, any new procedure or any new hot tip that you learned through COVID that some people might say, ah, COVID's done, virus is gone. We don't need to do that anymore. But is there something that you're thinking, hey, man, that's a great procedure. That's a new thing that we're going to keep in our in our um, our quiver of arrows, so to speak. Sure. Um, I think the digital advancement, the digital revolution, it, you know, it's happened so quick in the past six months, if you've embraced it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's something that has made, you know, tennis has been antiquated in terms of booking online and software for that. And so we've got to make it easier for people to book and to play tennis. So we've yeah. seen some great success stories, making it easier for people through an app to book and play tennis. There's plenty of apps out there that do a pretty decent job of it. So mm -hmm. I think that's something um, in terms of on the court, we've reduced our ratios. You know, at times we've previously had a five or a six to one clinic ratio. So we've gone back to a four to one clinic ratio. So I know the players oh. love being at a four to one ratio on the court. Yeah. And then in terms of the, the pros on the court, you know, pretty early on, we said we don't want any members or customers or guests picking up the tennis balls. Yeah. So does a pro want to do a drill where he feeds 300 balls and go and pick them all up himself? Yeah. Not really. Oh. So trying to incorporate a lot more live ball drills and almost a pro having a competition to see how few balls they can feed in a, in a drill or a clinic because they're just trying to get a rally going to live ball. And for me as a coach, I always like to try and get a live ball going as quick as possible. So hopefully yeah. we're seeing more live ball coming out of COVID. Oh, you are speaking my language right <laughs> there. I love that. Well, Scott Colburn, Thank you so much, and uh, I much appreciate your time and your wisdom and sharing it with our Texas pros. Appreciate it, Mike. Great chatting with you, and uh, all the best. Look forward to catching up in Austin sometime soon. Yes, sir.